Hi, my name is Ming and I am 29 years old. Growing up as an Asian American has its challenges, especially when it comes to a Chinese American like me. I have faced unfair treatment because of my background. I have learned to stand up for myself and not let discrimination bring me down. Life has taught me to be tough so that I can handle anything that comes my way. But sometimes people still surprise me with their ignorance. Take my father-in-law, for example. He doesn't seem to understand how hard it is to be different in America. Let me tell you about my family. My husband, Mario, is from the Dominican Republic and I am a Chinese-American. We love learning about each other's culture and traditions. Recently, Mario's stepfather, Hiroshi, joined our family. He is also from East Asia like me, which I thought was cool. I was glad to have someone who understood my background, but everything changed when Hiroshi came into our lives. Matteo and his mom, Sofia, started speaking Spanish more, especially when Hiroshi was around. At first I didn't think much of it because Spanish is their first language. Besides, they didn't say anything bad. I know because I speak Spanish too. You know, I want to surprise my husband by learning Spanish. He really appreciates it when people do things for him. So I thought learning his language would bring us closer. I kept it a secret longer than I planned because I was afraid to tell them. I understood what they were saying, even though I was getting better at Spanish. But I was still afraid of making a mistake and embarrassing myself. Maybe my fear was for the best because when Hiroshi showed up, Sofia and Matteo started speaking Spanish more often. I figured in those days it was better not to speak Spanish. Imagine being brought into a family with different cultures and feeling abandoned by everyone. Out of respect for Hiroshi, and because we were both from East Asia, I continued to speak English to him. I thought it was a little strange that they spoke more Spanish, but I didn't pay much attention to it. That was until I started hearing insults in Spanish that really surprised me. I remember that day vividly as if it had just happened. We all gathered around the table to enjoy a meal together. The food smelled amazing and we were chatting merrily, but then disaster struck. I accidentally spilled sauce everywhere. When I reached for the gravy boat, it was like a river of regret flowed across the table. You can imagine the chaos that followed. Sophia, my mother-in-law, started swearing in Spanish. Although I am not fluent in Spanish, I realized she was saying nasty things about me. It was painful, but Matteo, my husband, stood up for me. He told my mom that her insults were unacceptable. Then Sophia said something that broke my heart. She asked Matteo why he was defending me because, in her opinion, I didn't understand what she was saying anyway. Those words hurt me deeply. It was even more painful than her insults earlier. I felt so ashamed and hurt that she had said such a thing. It seemed she was used to talking about me behind my back in her own language. I choked on my water, feeling depressed. But Hiroshi, my father-in-law, comforted me. He reminded me that everyone makes mistakes and accidents happen. He even said there was more sauce in the pot, trying to lighten the mood. What Hiroshi didn't know was that it wasn't the spilled gravy that took my breath away. It was Sophia's hurtful words that questioned my worth. I couldn't shake off the doubts that crept into my mind. Had I understood her correctly? Had I lost touch with reality? I couldn't believe that my own mother-in-law, who was supposed to be supportive, was talking about me like this. After dinner, haunted by Sophia's words, I needed confirmation. I asked a Spanish-speaking friend and even used Google Translate. Unfortunately, my fears were true. Sophia had intentionally been rude and disrespectful. I couldn't understand why she felt that way about me. I kept my discoveries to myself for now, deciding to watch our family dynamics and wait for the right time to address this. The next morning, as we sat at the breakfast table, there was an awkward silence. I sat quietly, my heart heavy, while the others chatted as usual. Sophia and Matteo started speaking in Spanish, unaware of the impact their words had. Suddenly, Sophia said something shocking. I regret marrying this old, stupid man, Sophia said, unaware that I understood her words. My heart sank as I heard her once again. Sophia had revealed her true feelings, ruining our mealtime harmony. Meanwhile, Hiroshi chuckled and said, I should learn Spanish so I can understand what you two are always talking about. If only he knew the painful truth behind their laughter. Sophia and Matteo pretended it was all harmless teasing, hiding the hurtful gossip they were sharing right in front of him. But the gossip didn't stop there. 
Matteo and Sofia continued, each comment more hurtful than the last. Let me give you some examples. They mocked Hiroshi's accent, mimicking his attempts to pronounce certain words. They laughed at his cultural traditions, saying they were strange or unnecessary. And they made jokes about his age, saying he was past his prime. As I sat there, I felt more and more uncomfortable. It was like watching a cruel game where Hiroshi was the target of teasing without even knowing it. My heart hurt for him, knowing he was being hurt by his own family. This wasn't the love and acceptance I hoped for when our cultures came together. In that moment, I promised myself I wouldn't stay silent anymore. Sophia might have said hurtful things about me, but I wouldn't let her treat this kind old man the same way. I knew I had to address the tension in our family to make them see the value of our diverse backgrounds and the importance of treating each other with kindness. As time passed, I became more determined to expose Mario and Sophia's unkind treatment of Hiroshi. Armed with my phone, I started recording their hurtful conversations during meals. I wanted to show them their behavior and its impact. With each meal, I discreetly captured their words, knowing they would reveal the truth. As their insults grew harsher, Hiroshi started to notice something was wrong. He and I were constantly left out, and it was clear something needed to change. As Hiroshi felt more excluded, his lively spirit dimmed. I tried to guide our conversations in English to include everyone, but Matteo and Sofia always switched back to Spanish, shutting us out. Their gossip and insults towards Hiroshi ruined the atmosphere at meals. When I listened to the recordings, I realized something heartbreaking. Sofia had married Hiroshi for his money, regretting that she couldn't inherit his fortune until he passed away. I was shocked by her greed. And Mario, my husband, not only joined in the insults but found them funny, supporting his mother's awful intentions. The realization hit me hard. How could I have missed their true colors? These were the people I trusted to embrace and celebrate our diverse family, yet they betrayed that trust. I knew I had to do something, not just for Hiroshi's sake, but for the respect and love our family deserved. Late into the night, I listened to those recordings, steeling myself to confront Matteo and Sofia with the evidence of their cruelty. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I couldn't let them continue hurting us. As I planned my approach, I promised myself I wouldn't let their toxicity ruin our lives any longer. Hiroshi deserved better, and so did our family. Determined to make a change, I geared up to confront Matteo and Sofia about their hurtful actions. But before I faced them, I knew one thing. Hiroshi needed to hear the truth first. He deserved to know. Gathering my courage, I approached Hiroshi, sensing his heavy heart. With a comforting smile, I asked, Hey, Hiroshi, how are you holding up? He sighed and met my gaze, his vulnerability clear. It's been tough, honestly. I'm having a hard time fitting into this new family setup. The constant use of Spanish makes me feel left out, like I don't belong. Maybe I should consider those Spanish classes after all. Understanding his struggle, I nodded sympathetically. I hear you, Hiroshi. It's been bothering me too, but there's something important I need to tell you. He looked intrigued, curious about what I had to say. What's on your mind, Ming? Taking a deep breath, I confessed the secret I'd been keeping. Hiroshi, I understand Spanish. I've been following every conversation Matteo and Sofia have had. They didn't know because I never joined in on the Spanish talks. I kept it to myself because I felt nervous and embarrassed about my language skills, but I do understand them completely. Hiroshi looked surprised. Why didn't you tell them? I'm sure they would have helped you with your Spanish. I smiled sadly. You're probably right, Hiroshi. I was just nervous and embarrassed. I wanted to surprise Matteo once I learned enough Spanish to have a real conversation, but I kept delaying it worried he wouldn't be impressed. Still, maybe it's a good thing I didn't tell them. Why do you say that? He asked, his curiosity piqued. By keeping this secret, I was able to hear their conversations. And what I heard wasn't good. They had been talking about you behind your back, saying hurtful things. The language barrier protected them, but now they'll have to face the consequences. Hiroshi looked confused and concerned. What do you mean, Ming? What have they been saying about me? I took his hands in mine, speaking firmly. Hiroshi, they've been making fun of you, 
mocking you and saying mean things about you. It's been happening for weeks, and it's terrible that they can talk about you like that. His eyes showed a mix of surprise, hurt, and gratitude. I don't know what to say. Thank you for telling me the truth. I never thought they would do something like this. What exactly have they been saying? He asked, bracing himself for the harsh reality. Hiroshi, I know this is hard to hear, but I have to be honest with you, I said. Sophia married you for your money, and both she and Matteo are waiting for you to pass away so they can inherit your fortune. As my words sank in, Hiroshi's disbelief turned into shock and confusion. No, Ming, that can't be true. Sophia loves me, and Matteo loves me too. They wouldn't do that. Are you sure you're being honest with me? With determination, I assured him, Hiroshi, I wouldn't bring this up without evidence. I recorded their conversations, and you can hear it for yourself. Ask any Spanish-speaking person you know to confirm what they're saying. I then airdropped the recordings to Hiroshi's phone, letting him uncover the truth for himself. Days passed, and the tension between Hiroshi, Sophia, and Matteo grew thicker. I gave Hiroshi space to process everything. Then, one day, he pulled me aside, his face showing a mix of acceptance and gratitude. I owe you an apology, Ming. I doubted you, blinded by my love for Sophia. But after talking to my Spanish-speaking friends and listening to those recordings, I believe you. I can't believe they said such awful things about me. What did I do to deserve this? I know, Hiroshi. It's a lot to take in, and I'm sorry. But I felt you needed to know the truth. I've decided to get an annulment. I'm old. Maybe I can't waste time with people who don't care about me. It's just hard to believe you'll be leaving so soon. Leaving sounds like the right move. I think you should do it, I said. This will be my last night here. Tomorrow, I'll go and won't contact Sophia and Matteo until I'm ready to start the annulment process. But for now, I think I need a break. You deserve real love and peace, Hiroshi, and so do I. With that, Hiroshi and I hugged, and then we both went our separate ways. The next day, just as he said, Hiroshi was gone. He packed his things and left, leaving Sophia and Matteo confused and free to keep talking badly about him. As I put away the dishes, I could hear Sophia and Matteo in the nearby living room. Their insults towards Hiroshi made me furious. Why were they being so cruel? Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. With a surge of confidence, I decided to confront them about their hurtful behavior. Enough was enough. I know exactly what you've been saying about Hiroshi and your secret Spanish conversations, I said firmly. Sophia's face went pale and she looked shocked. Matteo tried to act innocent. You don't know what you're talking about, he insisted. At that moment, I unleashed a side of me they had never seen before. Speaking fluent Spanish, I confronted them directly. Don't underestimate me. I've understood everything you two have been saying for the past three weeks. You've been insulting and disrespecting Hiroshi since he entered our lives. Matteo looked embarrassed, avoiding eye contact. They were caught in their lies. Finally, Mario spoke up, his voice filled with curiosity, regret, and perhaps even hurt. Why didn't you tell me you could speak Spanish? You're really good. I gave a bitter smile. I was embarrassed by my imperfect Spanish. But now I see that it helped me uncover the truth about your true intentions towards Hiroshi. Their eyes widened in shock, struggling to comprehend the gravity of the situation. Sophia's voice shook as she asked, What do you mean, Ming? I took a deep breath, revealing the truth bit by bit. I've told Hiroshi everything. He's on vacation now, away from this toxic environment. And because of what he's learned, he's going to pursue an annulment. So you won't get the money. Confusion and panic filled the room as Sophia and Mario realized the consequences of their actions. The realization that their pursuit of Hiroshi's wealth had been fruitless left them stunned. You see, Sophia and Mario... Greed and manipulation may have clouded your judgment temporarily, but in the end, the truth wins out. Hiroshi's fortune will never be yours. Your betrayal shattered his love and trust. As the reality of their actions sank in, Sophia and Matteo faced the consequences of their greed and deceit. The facade they had built around Hiroshi crumbled, and their dreams of an easy fortune vanished. In that moment, I stood firm, knowing I had spoken up for what was right, even if it strained our family's fragile harmony. Unfortunately, the damage had been done, 
and tension lingered between Matteo, Sofia, and me. Realizing the toxicity of the situation, I knew I couldn't stay any longer. If they could treat Hiroshi like that, who knows what they said about me. Their true colors had been exposed, and I couldn't ignore the toxicity in our relationship. Quietly, I started planning my exit. I reached out to Hiroshi for guidance and support. He, being the kind soul he was, encouraged me and even offered financial help to start anew. He knew I deserved better than the toxic environment we were in. I waited for the right moment to tell them I was leaving. The tension in the house was thick, with Matteo and Sofia carrying the weight of their failed scheme. They were angry and resentful, hiding any remorse they might have felt. With my preparations complete, I gathered the courage to make a clean break. The perfect moment came, and with my bags packed and determination in my heart, I faced Mario and Sofia. I calmly told them that their actions had destroyed the trust and love between us. Staying in such a toxic environment would only hurt us more. Their faces twisted with anger and regret as they realized the consequences of their behavior. In that moment, I made my decision to leave. Standing tall, I asserted my worth and declared my independence. Their attempts to persuade me otherwise were futile. I had made up my mind, and nothing could change it. With a final farewell, I walked away from the toxicity that had plagued our lives, stepping into a new chapter. As I journeyed towards self-discovery and freedom, I carried the lessons learned with me. No longer would I be confined by others' expectations and judgments. I had found my voice and would use it to shape my destiny. Leaving behind the negativity that once consumed me, it was time to embrace my strength and forge a path true to myself.